Namaskar. Friends, welcome to this course number 26. Let's continue our discussion on one of the sources of Klesha, that is Avidya. We have started examining this and uh, Avidya is uh, not that easy to be understood with the aid of our of our intellect. We need a deep insight to understand this particular term Avidya. In our last uh, discourse, the speaker has uh, given the distinction between Aparavidya and Paravidya. How Aparavidya causes Avidya. Because Aparavidya is not permanent and eternal. It is subject to change. But then we mistake it for uh, something real. And therefore, we are caught in pain. We are caught in confusion. More than uh, this, linked with this avidya is what the speaker has already introduced, the word maya. Maya is illusion. That is the near translation of an English word. Let's consider man in space. Many astronomers and astrophysicists say that six to six thousand five hundred stars or visible within the range of a human sight, unaided human sight. If this is taken as a group, the astronomers and astrophysicists say that there are around one lakh such groups which can be seen within the range of a, a powerful telescope. That is, this vast creation is um, filled with the infinite number of uh, galaxies. One galaxy may contain 100 billion stars. And uh, some of these stars may be smaller than the sun. Or some of the stars are bigger than the sun. The diameter of the sun is 8,65,000 miles. You can imagine how big the sun is and if, if we say that there are stars bigger than the sun, something unimaginable beyond the realm of intellect beyond the comprehension of intellect. And uh, further narrowing down, we have uh, a solar system which spreads around the seven billion miles 
according to astrophysicists, from one side to the other. And within this, I mean, this solar system comprises planets. And further narrowing down this uh, solar system, if we take this Earth, which is very insignificant by comparison, its diameter is, its orbital diameter is only 8,000 miles. Whereas the diameter of the sun is 8,65,000 miles. It means the sun is 108 times bigger than the earth. And the distance between the sun and the earth is 93 million miles. Imagine this distance the earth is orbiting around the sun on its own axis and also revolving around the sun. Oh, in one galaxy you find one lakh billions of stars and one solar system is nothing in this uh, one galaxy. You can just imagine, I don't think we can, our imagination can, uh, can can capture this uh, vastness of the universe. What the speaker is trying to say is that this Earth, this tiny planet, is nothing compared to the vast infinite space. And remember, the speaker has given you the description of only one galaxy. Likewise, you have billions of galaxies. Even if uh, the light could travel with a speed of 1,86,000 miles per second, it would take 1 lakh years to reach from one side to the other in one galaxy. Such is the the, the infiniteness of uh, the universe. Even the word universe is a, a limited word to capture this entire creation. And this creation is not static. This universe is not static. It is most dynamic. It is expanded. Oh, imagine the limitedness of our intellect in this vast creation. What the speaker is trying to say is that what is the space, what is, what is man in this vast infinite space is most insignificant. Further, if you take this man, what is this man? Or what is the matter that you see in the whole universe?
the Newtonian physics known as classical physics has simply described the vast universe as nothing but indestructible blocks of matter. But the quantum physics came later in the 20th century and examined this indestructible blocks of matter and they have reduced, the quantum physics has reduced it to an atom, molecule, molecule to atoms and atoms to sub-atoms. That this atom contains nothing but permutations and combinations of uh, of uh, the articles, particles, the negative, the positive and negative energies of uh, the particles called protons and electrons. The electrons uh, in varied number move in varied orbits around these protons which are centered in the atom and they contain profound energy when it is split further. So this matter that we see is finally reduced as nothing but energy. That energy is expressed through this matter. So this is the composition of uh, matter. And man is nothing but a miniature of that solar system. As we have just now understood, matter is nothing but composition of molecules, atoms and subatoms. So also, at our level, at individual level, man is also composed of the same. So he too is nothing but a composition of atoms. And when split, it is all energy. So matter is finally reduced to energy. This is the way how the physics has uh, examined uh, the constitution of man and the astrophysicists have um, given their own description of the composition of this whole universe. In this vast infinite universe, what is man? And what is this blind intellect that cannot, uh, that is incapable of comprehending this vast infinite universe which is ever expanding. Similarly, let us consider the man in relation to time. Time at our level is measurable. It is called physical time. We have divided the day and night into 24 hours and an hour into 60 minutes and 60 minutes into 60 seconds and each second uh, into 10 fractions and so on. 
but in reality there actually is no time cause for the sake of uh, carrying on physical activities in this world we have uh, divided time in this manner but otherwise uh, there actually is no time in the sense that we have just now examined the space is so vast and infinite that we cannot uh, imagine the amount of space that the universe is occupied that billions and billions of uh, stars have occupied the space it is something unimaginable similarly time at that level at that the level of creation at cosmic level is immeasurable so what is man in this vast infinite space and time is simply nothing <coughs> is most insignificant by comparison to the entire universe the speaker is trying to say how limited man is how this element intellect makes man proud enough to see and declare and proclaim that he is all supreme in this vast creation but he has not looked at himself in relation to this vast creation unbound by space and time if for a few moments we take ourselves out of this same uh, limited space and time and relate ourselves to this vast infinite creation we are simply dumbfounded we feel ashamed of ourselves of having considered ourselves as supreme in the last few hundred years of human civilization this is a fact and we do not recognize this fact what the speaker is trying to say is man is nothing is simply most insignificant by comparison to the vast infinite creation do we see this uh, fact can we recognize and realize this fact i am only presenting the, these um, facts of the universe as given by many astronomers and astrophysicists but think of the truth that encompasses this whole creation think of the consciousness of course another dimension of it that is all pervading 
and what are we? We are nothing. As long as we do not realize this, as long as we do not recognize this fact, it's not only a fact but also truth, a formidable truth, a truth that cannot be changed, the truth that cannot be questioned. then we are caught in illusion. Maya is nothing but getting ourselves caught in this kind of frame, not realizing and recognizing the vast truth behind us. And we think our world, our mind, our life, our institutions, our society that we have created in which we all live as members of the ultimate and final. So when we do not realize this truth, we are caught in illusion, it creates illusion. There is this kind of gap between us, the way or the kind of life we live, we lead in this world and the vast amount of space and time in the creation. This relating ourselves to the outside cosmos is very important. If we do not relate ourselves with the cosmos outside, the whole creation, it results in illusion. Because we think we are real. We think what we do is real. We think our intellect is real. We think the amount of knowledge that this intellect has produced and that is taped in all university libraries is final. But the kind of knowledge that we have generated is absolutely nothing in comparison to the vast creation outside and of course in which we are only a part. So this is the way, this is the way how we create illusion, Maya. Now Maya also stands for mistaking an identity of a thing or an object. When we do not see the things as they are and for a few moments if we imagine something else and uh, impose it on such things and objects which we see, then it creates false impression. So such false impression is not real. Once our perception is clear, once there is a clarity in our vision, then we see the objects as they are. As long as we do not see the things and objects as they are not, it results in Maya. 
and therefore it also creates pain. Also, in most cases we think the outside world is real, the matter that we see is real. But we do not see that this matter contains one property that is changing. So this matter is not constant, it keeps on changing, therefore whatever the knowledge that we have derived from such matter is also subject to change. This is what we have already learnt. But if we do not see this changing aspect of the matter, then it results in Maya. We create so many impressions, opinions, and we form uh, numerous images in our mind. And we live in those impressions, opinions and images constantly. And we think they are real. And we see the whole world through these impressions, opinions and images. But we do not realize that these impressions, opinions and images block our real perception, real seeing. They are not real, but we see the outer world through these formulated images in our mind. Similarly, everybody, everybody does this. Everybody has his own impressions, opinions and images. And everybody looks at the world through such things. Therefore, as everybody sees the whole world, other man through these formed images, impressions and opinion, what comes into conflict is only the image, only the impression, only the opinion. So my opinion is in conflict with your opinion. My impression is in conflict with your impression. My image is in conflict with your image. Do you see that there is a, a being, the true being behind these images, these impressions, these opinions? As long as we are caught in this whirlpool of uh, impressions, opinions and images, we are caught in Maya. I hope uh, the listeners have understood the very word Maya, how it results in. So, we think that our intellect, which does all these things, is final. No doubt this intellect is very powerful. No doubt this intellect is the cause of all the human knowledge. No doubt this intellect has created so many wonders in the world. all these scientific discoveries and inventions or the outcome of this intellect. 
the speaker is not um, belittling this uh, wonderful tool that this nature has given to this organism, to this creature. But then this man has failed to recognize its limitation, that intellect can take us only to a certain extent, to a certain degree of understanding the nature of this world, the nature of the matter and so on. But beyond that, intellect fails. Our intellect has its limitation and we fail to see this limitation, we fail to see its futility, that how it becomes incapable of going beyond. As long as we do not realize this, we are in the state of Maya. And where, it, where there is Maya, it creates pain. Pleasure in us.